Hey guys, this is Zhao. Um, this video is to help you with your take-home exam. I'm releasing the video in two parts. Part 1 will deal with Part A of the exam, which asks you to add temporary shocks to the solo model. Part B, uh, uh, the second video will deal with Part B of the exam, which asks you to set up continual shocks in the solo model. Okay, so let's start with Part A. What are these temporary shocks? Um, well, you can see here, uh, right now, I have uh, a solo economy. This eco economy has been parameterized in the same way as I've indicated here on the take-home exam. Uh, so as you can see right now, the, uh, the uh, economy is in steady state with a capital stock of 25 and an output of 5. Now, because the economy is in steady state, all of these variables in our model, the capital stock, output, savings, etc., all of these variables are just flat now, flatlining. Okay, they're remaining the same over time. Now, let's see what happens if we impose some sort of shock in the model. I'm going to start off with a technology shock. So you can see right now, the value of the technology parameter in our model is equal to 1, and it's equal to 1 in every single period. But if I impose a shock here in period 21, You'll see what happens is the way that this shock works is all of a sudden technology jumps from 1 to 2 in period 21. And then over the course of the next uh, 30 or 40 periods, it eventually dies back down to 1. Okay. Uh, over here in this graph, you can see I'm plotting the value of the technology parameter. Here it is at 1, it jumps up to 2, and then gradually it returns back to its original value of 1. Now this period of time when the technology is elevated, okay, this causes a number of changes to occur in the economy. We can see all of these other variables that are tied to the technology, such as output and savings, these are uh, also uh, spike up. And then the capital stock, even though this rise isn't quite as sudden, it rises steadily, reaches a peak, and then dies back down to its original value out here around period 300. Okay, we can also impose other sorts of shocks. Okay, let me turn the technology, oops, let me turn the technology shock off by setting the size of this shock to zero. Okay, I can impose a savings rate shock. Uh, let's double the savings rate, so a 0.25 shock will double the savings rate from 0.25 to, 5, uh, to 0.50. Okay, you can see that there are changes in the economy. And then, same, similarly with the depreciation rate, if I want to double the depreciation rate, from 0.05 to 0.10, I can impose a 0.05 shock that will increase the value to 0.10, and then you can observe the subsequent changes in the economy. Okay, so the exam asks you to set up these shocks and then to play around with the model. I'll ask you some questions about what you observe when you impose these shocks to the economy um, and why those changes occur. Okay, so how do we set up these shocks in our model? Well, let's go over to, um, to where we uh, sort of left off. Um, and by the way, uh, this material is, is essentially the same as the material that we covered in class on Wednesday. Okay, so if you were in class on Wednesday, uh, this is going to be a review. Um, you can see here that what I've set up right now on the left-hand side here is just the baseline solo model. And by the way, you guys all have access to this sheet. This sheet is shared with you. Uh, the link is on the take-home exam. Okay, so this is a starting point for imposing these temporary shocks. Now what's going on right now, okay, is that the economy is in steady state, and all of these variables, okay, are computed using formulas that refer to these baseline values of the model parameters. Now what I've done here is I've, I've added six columns, and these six columns are going to implement the shocks for us, okay. And so we're going to do this in three steps. The first thing we're going to do is to set up the shocks themselves. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to change technology in order to incorporate these shocks. And then finally, we're going to tie these variables over here, tie these formulas over here to the shocked values of the parameters instead of the baseline values of the parameters. Okay, so let's start with the technology shock. Now the way we're going to set up these shocks is that the shock is going to have size 0 in the first 20 periods and then in period 21 we're going to impose the shock. 
So what I want to do is I want to set zero, set the size of the shock to zero for uh, the first 20 periods. Now, the way I'm going to do this is a little bit roundabout, but it's going to help for later on. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type a zero here, and then I'm going to type a placeholder down here. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's say I just use the letter A. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this zero, hold down Control plus Shift, or Command plus Shift on the Mac, and the down arrow key. And what, what, that, what that'll do if, is if I tap the down arrow key, it'll select everything from this zero to an A. Now if I press Control plus D, or Command plus D on a Mac, it'll fill that zero all the way down to that placeholder. Okay. Now, again, in this situation, it's not really necessary. We could just select the cell and drag down, okay? but it's good practice for what we're about to do. Okay. So again, I'm going to put in a zero here, put in a little placeholder, and then I'm going to select Control plus Shift and then Control D to fill downwards. Okay. And that's going to make it so that the technology shock is simply zero in the first 20 periods and likewise with the other shocks. Okay. Then, in period 21, uh, we're going to impose the shock. And for now, let's set the size of the shock to 1. So I'm just going to put a 1 here uh, for each of these variables, each of these shock sizes. Okay. Now, we don't want the shock to last forever. This is a temporary change in the economy. So what I want to happen is, after this initial shock of 1, I want the shock to gradually die down. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the cell immediately below this one, okay, and I'm going to say that this is equal to the original value of the shock in period 21 times this parameter over here called the shock decay rate. Now I've currently set this parameter to 0.9, meaning that every period the shock will be 90% of the value that it was in the previous period. Now I want to lock this cell reference. Okay, we, we want it to always refer to this 0.9. We don't want it to refer to keep referring to cells lower down. Okay, so I'm going to lock this cell reference by pressing F4 or function uh, plus F4 on a Mac. Okay, and if you do that right, you should get a 0.9 there. And you can go ahead and copy that formula to these other three columns. And notice that when you copy it, it'll still be referring to the right cells because this latter reference is re still referring to this 0.9, and this first reference is a relative cell reference that always refers to the cell above. Okay, so now I simply want to fill this all the way down to period 600. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to period 600, I'm going to put a placeholder just like we did previously, then I'm going to use a combination of control and shift select all the way down to the placeholder, press Control D, and that'll fill that formula downwards. Okay. Again, Control plus Shift together with the arrow keys, and then Control D to fill downwards. Okay, now if you've done this correctly, what you'll see is that the size of the shock starts at 1, okay, and gradually diminishes, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, until it goes to 0 at around period 90. Okay, now this is the size of the shock. Uh, it's not the size of the parameter itself. The size of the parameter itself, the actual value of technology in the economy, is going to be equal to the baseline value, that is to say this 1.0, plus the size of the shock. So let me code that in. I'm going to say technology here is equal to the baseline value of technology, 1.0. I want to lock that cell reference and then I want to add on the size of the technology shock. Same thing with the savings rate. It's equal to the baseline value of 0.25, lock that cell, oops, lock that cell reference, and add the size of the shock. I want to do the same thing for depreciation. Yeah. Now go ahead and take those formulas and update them all the way down. Now with this formula, since there already is a formula that's filled all the way down to row 600 immediately adjacent to it, instead of using that trick with the placeholder, I can simply double click the square and it'll fill that all the way down. Okay, same thing with these three, just double click the little square and it'll fill it all the way down. Okay. Now you can see 
uh, if you set it up correctly, technology will be 1, the baseline value, until this shock occurs at period 21, after which it will increase by whatever, whatever value you put here. Right? We put 1 here, so it's going to increase by 1 and go to 2. Now if I change the size of the shock, say I, say I change the size of the shock to 2 instead of 1, okay, you can see the technology will triple rather than merely double. Okay, now at this point I want to insert a graph that displays to me the value of my parameters as a function of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select column A, I'm going to select the column for technology, holding down control or command on a Mac. Okay, that's how you select multiple columns, control or command on a Mac. Okay, so I'm going to select column A for the period number, technology, savings rate, and depreciation rate. I'm going to go to insert, chart, I'm going to select the smooth line chart, and I'm going to select use column A as labels. Okay? And that will show me the size of my shocks, and you can see right now all three of my shocks are the same size. They're all of size equal to 1. Okay? Um, you, if you want to, you can change the title of the chart uh, by double-clicking the cell right here. Uh, I'm going to say uh, shock size. Okay, and then I'm going to change the horizontal to period, and I'm going to change the vertical to just the shock size. Oops. Oh, you, I guess you have to press enter, shock size. Enter. Okay. Okay, now here's the thing. So we've now set up the shocks, but you'll notice that the economy over here, okay, these uh, val variables for capital stock, output, savings, and investment, none of these are responding to the shock. It's still just a 25 forever, and output is still at 5 forever. Okay, well, that's because we haven't tied these formulas to the shocks yet, okay? All of these formulas for the capital stock, uh, for output, okay, you can see that all of these formulas still refer only to the baseline value of the model parameters, not the shocked values of the, mo of the model parameters. So that's what I'm going to change right now. So let me go into output here. Okay, you can see right now here, output is equal to the baseline level of technology times the capital stock raised to the power of one half. Now since I introduced a new technology that takes into account the shock, that's what I want to refer it to instead. So I'm going to delete this cell reference to this baseline value of the model parameter over here. And I'm going to instead point the computer to here. Okay this new value of technology. And now with this cell, I no longer want to lock it because as we update downwards, I want it to refer to the, the corresponding value of technology, right? So for example, in this next cell, okay, I would want it to refer to this technology in period two, not the technology in period one. So we're not gonna lock this cell reference, okay? Okay, same thing with the savings and investment. Right now, this is referring to the baseline value of the savings rate. I'm gonna delete that and instead refer it to the shock value of the savings rate. Okay. Same thing with consumption. This is referring to 1 minus the savings rate. I want to refer it to the shock value of the savings rate. Okay. And then likewise, a similar change for the depreciation. I want it to refer to the shock value of the depreciation rate. Okay. Now, uh, when you change those formulas in this first line, it's not going to cha automatically change the subsequent formulas. So what you need to do is you need to update this downwards. So go ahead and uh, select this first row. Okay, you can hold down your mouse or you can use the shift key. Select that first row that we just updated. Hold down control and shift, go all the way down, and then press control D. That'll update all four of those columns. Okay. Now if you've updated it correctly, what you should see is because we have this shock entering the economy in period 21, the economy is in steady state for the first 20 periods, but then starting from period 21, things begin to change, the economy begins to evolve. Okay, finally, let's graph uh, these model variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the capital stock. So I'm going to select column 1, column A, hold down control, Select the second column, capital stock, uh, insert chart, 
We'll do the same thing as we did before, the smooth line chart, use column A as labels. So insert that. Okay. I'm going to call this the capital stock. And then I'm going to select column A and these other columns for the other model variables. I'm going to go to insert, chart, select the smooth line chart, use column A as labels. Press insert. Okay. And, uh, oops. and let's call this other variables. Okay. And then using these graphs, you'll be able to answer the questions that I have on the exam uh, because you'll be able to see pretty clearly what's happening to the economy at any given time. Okay. Um, now, how do you control the shocks? Well, you control the shocks by adjusting their values right here in period 21. Okay, right now we have all of the shocks turned on and set to size 1. If I want to look at just one shock at a time, for example, if I just want to look at what happens when there's a savings rate shock, I would turn the value of the shock in period 21 to 0 for everything except the savings rate call. Okay? Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, there's, there'll, there'll be a second video uploaded that will detail how to add the continual shocks. These are only a one-time.